everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today I want to talk to you about the solar system I installed on the ambulance. When I bought this brand new, uh, it was fairly expensive and I said to myself, the only way I can justify spending this kind of money is if it's going to last me the rest of my life. And if you know me, this is not the first time I've said that. I said that about the last van I bought and I love that van. It's only got 90,000 miles on it, but I kind of outgrew it and so it will not be the last van I ever live in. I hope the ambulance will be the last vehicle I ever live in. I'm uh, 66, I plan to live to 86. I got 20 more years on this earth. And I want those 20 years to be spent in a vehicle I love. And I want it to have all the power I can ever need. And so I designed an overkill system. This is more power, the very best equipment that I could afford and that I could buy. And so, uh, it's a, it's a really, to my mind, for me and my really pretty minimal power needs, it's a premium, premium system. So I'll tell you all about that. Uh, up to, I've, been, I've had solar on my vehicle since 2009. I put my first solar panel on in 2009. That was a long time ago. And so I've done it for a long time. I've been learning about it. My first panel was 135 watts. That 135 watt panel in 2009 cost me seven hundred dollars. Think about that. Seven hundred dollars. That's how much solar cost way back then. The decrease in price on solar is fantastic. Just to give you a comparison and show you how much solar has dropped, uh, I've got 720 watts of solar on the roof and it cost me seven hundred twenty dollars, dollar a watt. Uh, so for the same price of one 135 watt panel, I got 720 watts today. So the next decision I had to make was what kind of batteries, because really uh, the number of panels and the, pa and the battery they're going into are the key determiners of the system that you build in between them. So I started doing my research and everything I read and watched on YouTube and some really smart guys said that Battleborn Lithiums were the very best batteries you could buy. In fact, there are quite a few videos on YouTube where the guys demonstrate how one 100 hour lithium battleborn battery will give you as much power as four uh, standard 100 amp hour AGMs. And I believe it. Uh, so I bought two of them. I got them, I got a fairly good price. I bought two battleborns for 900 each. I've got $1,800 invested in, in battleborn batteries in there. And my batteries have never dropped below 13. I mean, it's unbelievable with that amount of solar. And with th those two really great batteries and really good components between the two, uh, my solar just never runs down. I, it's been fantastic. I've just loved it. Ran into a few days with uh, extended clouds and rain and nothing. Didn't have any impact on my life. So I think once I'd made those two decisions, then all I had to do was choose, of course, you've got the solar panels, you've got the solar controller, then you've got the batteries, and then coming off of the batteries, you have all of your uh, your inverter, and I had an inverter that I loved forever, and I bought it. I bought a new one. Uh, I gave the old one away because it was still running uh, with the uh, with the van, the old van that I, I donated to Hala. Uh, so those are basically all your components: solar panels, uh, solar controller, batteries, and inverter. And then you've got a lot of smaller components uh, that you you put on around it. So. You have four major components, lots of little smaller components. And I'm afraid it's the smaller components, uh, fuses, wires, uh, the crimping, uh, those kinds of things that are actually what scare people. Because the four components uh, in themselves are not at all scary. It's the connecting them all together with this other stuff. So uh, let's go take a look at it and I'll show you everything I have. So the next step in the tour of my solar system is the roof, of course where I have four 180 watt panels. So when you go to design your own system, you have, you have your first two considerations are, how much can you spend? How much roof space do you have? This thing is 12 foot by seven and a half foot. So I could have gotten up to, I think at least 1200 watts up here and more had I crammed, but I, I didn't need 1200 watts. I knew I didn't need it. I wanted more than I could possibly use. And so I settled on 720. These panels are made by Bouge RV, B-O-U-G-E RV. Here's the big thing, and I won't keep going over this. These panels can be shipped by UPS, just regular UPS, FedEx, anyone. 
beyond this size, up to about 200 watts and over, generally, there are exceptions, uh, you're paying freight. That means they go on a pallet and the price screams. And yes, you can get those panels really cheap, but uh, you're gonna pay huge amounts for uh, shipping. So these were free shipping from, from Amazon, which is why I bought them. Uh, and let me tell you that I bought two of them and Bouge RV gave me the other two. So I've only paid for two and they gave me two to test. I'll just tell you, and I, you believe me or not, uh, I have found them to be outstanding and excellent in any way. If I ever have problems with them, which I'm sure I will not, these things are commodities you buy on price. Buy solar panels on price. Uh, if you if you get a, do a good test on a used solar panel, I wouldn't hesitate to buy a used solar panel. So before we go down, well, let me explain that I put these all in series. These are not in parallel, which is pretty common, but I wanted them to be in series because I used a Victron a solar controller and it is one of the very best you can buy. And the more headroom it has, the amount of bandwidth it has in voltage, the more it can manipulate the voltages and get you the maximum amount of power put into your battery. So they're about, just about 90 volts going down into the controller. And it's a 150 volt controller, so that's nothing for it. That just gives it a lot more room to work with and manipulate the voltage to choose the perfect one for that exact situation. So in, in whatever state the charge the battery's in, it will find the voltage that will give it the maximum amount of amperes going into the battery. So let me quick measure up this panel for you because I think these 180s are a really good choice. Uh, if you can fit two of these, that's 360 and it's $360. And that is a really perfect amount for most van dwellers. You'll have too much in the summer when you get all the great sun, but in the winter or in extended cloudy days or bad weather, you will really be glad you have too much and not enough. So let me measure these for you. Uh, this panel is 26 and a half inches wide and two of them together, which would be your ideal, would be about 53 inches. So if you have 53 inches across on your rig, then you can get two of these. You can actually, actually bolt these together. That does no harm at all, um, as long as you give them good airflow underneath them. So at 53 inches, you've got 360 uh, watts of solar, and the length is 58 and a half, a little slightly less than 58 and a half. So it, that's the dimensions, and you know you can get two of the one or two of these on your roof, uh, and if you can, then that's just a really good amount. Okay, here you can see the uh, cables going in down through. This black stuff, and I know no one is, you've probably never seen anyone use this on a roof before. This is Henry's uh, wet patch roof sealant. I've used this on a dozen roofs, and it is the best stuff ever made. And so I used it here. Uh, there's mesh in here. You can't see it. It's completely covered with the Henry's. Henry's 208. I have put this stuff on at in, underwater and it has held and worked perfectly. This is the, this is the best roofing material you'll ever find. Uh, it's ugly, <laughs> and you're never gonna show this off, but boy, this will last forever. Henry's Roof Patch, Wet Roof Patch 208. That's what this is. Okay, so here's the closet uh, where I keep my solar. It was the, as I said, it was the oxygen supply. And you can see that there's a pass-through right here. That's, I keep it uh, open as a fan. That's a fan right there in front of it. And on a hot day, I keep it open and I can't close it, but I keep it open and blow, pull air through the outside. I like that a lot. So the first thing I did was decide on the batteries. Once I had the batteries decision made, then I could build the components around it. And the question is lithium or standard old AGMs. And to me, um, for a very long time now, I have been holding out on AGMs and that has been my thinking, but that has changed. I am now sold on lithiums. I think they've advanced, the price is still really high, but they've advanced, and I just think that these lithiums are the way to go. By, from my research, <clears throat> there's no question in my mind that Battleborn is the best lithium you can buy, so I bought two of these Battleborns. 
These have uh, 3,500 cycles and up. My uh, AGMs, I'd be lucky if I got 1,000 cycles. So they're going to last so much longer. If they get double or triple or quadruple the life, then I've saved a lot of money because I only spent $1,800 on these and I would have spent $1,200 on my four AGMs. So at the top, this is the power coming down. So it's coming in at around 90 volts and coming down, it goes through a, uh, it goes through a circuit breaker so that I can disconnect the panels from the controller at any time. And then it goes down from there, as you can see, into my Victron One Smart Solar MPPT 15070. So it will handle 150 volts. I only have 90, between 90 and 95 coming in, and 70 amps. I think most of us, from my research, most of us are running too small a controller. If you give them some headroom to manipulate, this is a really, really smart controller. If you give it some headroom to manipulate the volts and the amps, you'll get more into your battery. Now, there's no question in my mind that Victron right now is the leader. That's not to say they're the only good one. There are many, many, many good ones. Uh, there, there are so many good solar controllers. It's amazing. It's an embarrassment of riches. However, the one thing that separates them, well, the one thing that really separates them is Battleborn recommends them, and Battleborn on their site gives you the parameters they want you to enter into the Victron controller. The best thing about the Victron controller is that it gives you the uh, app. I love this app. You know, so many apps are crap. They, fa they fail, they're, they're wonky. You never know what they're gonna do next. The Victron controller uh, app never fails. It works 100% of the time. It's so reliable. I just love the thing. And so uh, you just take the app, you get the numbers from, uh, from Battleborn, and enter them, and the two are working perfectly together, giving you the maximum amount of power, maximum amount of length of life, max, maximum number of cycles. So I just really recommend that combination of Victron and Battleborn. I'm sold on it. So and then coming out of the uh, controller, we have another fuse box. I can disconnect them if there's ever a problem. Uh, the fuse will blow, it'll save the, save the day and then all the power from the controller goes into the batteries. And coming out of the battery is the uh, power here. We'll follow the positive. The positive, uh, that's a heavy cable. That's a two watt cable. And it comes out and goes to a 200 amp breaker. And then from the 200 amp breaker, it goes into the inverter. Now, for an inverter, I bought this Xantrex ProWatt 2000. 2000 watt inverter, pure sign. I have owned one exactly like this for nine years and it has never failed me. It has run my microwave perfectly hundreds, thousands, literally, I think thousands of times. I used it every day for year after year after year. And then, of course, the system goes inside um, and uh, inside, and here, I'll just show you here. Here's how I'm getting 110 in. I'm just plugging a, an extension. Uh, in and so 110 is going in that way, and then I have cables going in to fuse boxes inside. Uh, this is a DC to DC uh, Victron controller. It is uh, intended to take the power from the starting battery or the alternator and then charge the house batteries as you drive. I've had troubles with it and I haven't mastered it, I haven't got it working correctly yet, so it is not plugged in. Here is one of the fuse blocks that I have inside. You can see it's right beside the, um, the oxygen tank where the, where the whole uh, solar power system is. And it's just multiple fuses and it has a positive block that's fused. Each one individually is fused and it has a negative block. So if I install something like this, um, this is how I get 12 volt and how I get USB. You can see those are USB outlets. So that's how I'm getting my USB. It just goes into this thing and it just is a standard and plugs into that. And then the positive and the negative go to the ground block. The negative goes to the ground block, the positive goes to a fused block. You can see this cable that I use, that's 10, I believe that's 10 
uh, 10 gauge. I went too big a cable and I used duplex cable. So you see it has two cables, a red and a black one, and they're in a sheath. That means it's duplex. So two cables inside one. And I like that. I like that it was white. It isn't as noticeable. It runs throughout the uh, inside of the coach. I did not make any connection between my solar power system and the uh, ambulance system. So there you go. That's the whole thing. Beginning to end, you know my solar system. Uh, 720 watts of solar going into a Victron controller, going into a pair of Battleborn batteries. Uh, it's just a uh, Xantrex uh, 2000 watt pure sine inverter coming out. Pretty simple, uh, expensive. It's good stuff. I think it will last me a very, very long time. I bought quality and I do recommend that. If you have the money buying quality, you can, buy, you can put together a system for much, much less money that will serve you really, really well. Um, and so don't, if you can't do that, don't feel in the least bit bad. That's just the way it works. Okay, I hope that helped you. You got something out of that. If you did, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later. Bye now.